Hey, what's up, all? I turned here. Yeah. So here to play live play live learn uh, World of War eighty five. It's been I should have to look at Board Game Geek ten years. I'm guessing since I played this last. The old maps, the old version. I played Nations at War more recently. But there's a lot of little changes here. Lots of little cool things have been added to this. Um, I think to uh, kind of make it uh, more realistic, yet still keep a lot of the simplicity here. Now there is something I'm kind of struggling with right now, and that's HQs. It seems like the HQs are more flexible where they can go. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to live learn this. I'm on StreamYard. Um, please comment. I am open to uh, mockery. I'm not too worried about tactics at the moment. Um, more trying to get the rules down. That's me saying it's my excuse to um, say I don't know what I'm doing and and so if you mock my uh, uh, my uh, tactics, I can say oh, I'm just learning how to play the game, man. So I have the camera low like this. It's not ideal. Obviously, it'd be better to be straight down like that. But um, the glare is crazy from my light. I need to get a diffuser on it. I could move my game to that side of the table, but I've currently got a mini game over there. And that's not too easy to move. But even with that, I have a problem with that because I like to live shoot those as well. And uh, that's about a great a battle group. Americans charging some Germans over there trying to get some objectives. So anyway, that's that. We're in World War Three, Cold War gone hot. We've got a scenario one here. We got nine T-80s uh, attacking from any side of this map or up here. Um, so any part of the map up here or this part, the east side. East side. I've decided to go east side, so they're in here quicker. I did consider going from here and going down and around. Take these, they have to take this town and this town. I find it interesting they didn't name the towns, too. Um, I kind of like that because then you can make them generic. Oh, I could label the town names myself. Mm, that's cool. With a Sharpie or a um, dry erase marker. Uh, the Americans have two M1 Abrams, an M901 ITV, an infantry unit with an, a 113 carrying some tow ATGMs and a Jeep tow. Improved positions on this side of the river. I thought I'd put them on here. They have to have every town hex. And I put an improved position here in kind of the back hex. Um, I might as well put that over here, though. I don't know if they have to be under that or not. But um, I think I'm going to keep them back here. So that way I can kind of fall back into it. That's what I was thinking. So, and then there's nine T-80s coming here. So it's cool, they got this whole reactive armor thing. There's a lot more flexibility in movement and shooting that I don't recall, definitely not Nations at War because they can't do that. Let's see who we got posting here, who's live here with us. Ah, the original Grognar, dude, you are welcome to come on if you want and guide me along. I am open to that if you're open to that. So, um, so that's what's going on here. Um, the Russians, um, so, I, now there's lots of little cool things I'm liking about this. Did I bring my notebook down? I did. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just reading the rules. I've scanned the rules. Um, I'm a little unclear on missiles, reactive armor, and then headquarters are a little different. So I'm a little curious about that. Devin, let me know if you want to come on. Just IM me on Facebook or something, and I'll send you the code. And you're like, dude, you learned the game yourself, bro. I'm not going to teach you the game. Um. They have rubble and fire checks. I think that's cool. Uh, you can you can blow out bridges with fire. I don't know if you can blow bridges up with artillery or not. But all right, so the it's a ten turn scenario. The Russians have to go here and take that town. They don't have any infantry to take the town. I'm not using battlefield friction. Um, no planes, no artillery, no indirect. Okay. So the cool thing is the Russians get initiative. Um, again, an impulse, initiative impulse, so they can go without drawing a card. I think that's pretty cool too. They are on the attack, it makes sense. And they so they only have one formation card in the deck up here. And um, the Americans have two. And of course there's the end operation phase. All right, we're going to have Devin come on and rules adjudicate. Send me a message in. Uh... 
it's only getting much more exciting having someone else on with me. And uh, I sh should actually have Devin play, but now I can ask him for ideas on it. Sent it to you, Devin. So I'm, I don't know how long I'm going to go here, but we'll just try for a little bit and see what happens. I'll keep an eye out for Devin. So, uh, okay. So the cool thing is there's with all these missiles going flying around, you can run out of ammo. So I'll have to check that as well. So I think that's pretty much what we want to do. I can start moving, I think, these guys without too much effort, though I could get some reaction fire. Um, pretty basic terrain. So hills do what? Uphill, it's plus one. There's some bonus if you're attacking. i got to keep an eye out for Devin coming on here. So if anyone else is watching, come on. It looks like Devin's it, but if anyone else comes on, let me know. All right, so the cities. Um, ooh, there's some serious defensive bonus. Plus three. Uh oh plus 2d6, plus 1d6. Okay. All right. So I'm going to assume half axes are good until I hear otherwise. So I think, so these guys have a movement of six. So I could go, and what do woods do? Woods are two. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I could see that guy there. Oh, that's on my movement. So I couldn't be, it. so I shouldn't move here. Because then they would be able to, um, that M1A would be able to, be able to fire on them. So I might as well move into the trees at least my first turn. I've got 10 turns here, so I can chill out a little bit. Um, so let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, I need my ops complete markers. I sent it via to the Facebook Messenger, Devin. And I gotta get my ops complete markers. I really, I've only punched out the pieces I need for this um, particular game. I didn't even get my disrupted, and so this is me learning the game. Pretty, pretty exciting. Out of command, Rex. Yeah, I'll need. I pretty much need this whole board here. So I'm live un unpunching too. So ops complete. Well, actually, what I really need to do is I really need to go through the all the steps here to make sure I um, knowing all the stuff I'm doing here when the unit's activated and all that. So I'll punch out some disrupteds here and get going here. They punch out easy. I mean, just with your finger and there's no messes. Here we go. He's waiting. He's patiently waiting. Everybody, welcome Devin, the OG. Original Grognar, what's up, man? What's up? All right. I, now, you could you could probably shrink me down or, or keep me off camera so people can actually get a better look at the map. They don't need to see my ugly mug while you're playing. No doubt about it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, I can just show my screen. There, there we go. go. Say goodbye to Devin, everyone. His face. All right. You know, Devin, I think there's no better way to learn than um, with the mocking public. Okay. So I kind of, I, just kind of, kind of, I kind of I should have looked at the whole phase here. There's not a whole lot to do, I don't think, and especially this initiative phase of this thing. So I can kind of skip the whole phase turn thing. Um, so I have my Russians, Devin, coming in. I decided I'll just have them come in this way. You know, taking these two towns. I'm assuming you've played scenario one before. Um, I don't know. Is that a dangerous assumption? It's a dangerous assumption. Okay. So I'm just going to have the Russians come in this way, kind of cover this hill and cover these guys up here, and then the six units will come down this side of the map. Like I said, I apologize. I can't uh, show the top view of the map, but all you'll see is my lights. So is, is it all one formation? Yes, sir. Be very careful about keeping a centralized location for your headquarters. Thing uh, that will kill yeah. Soviet formations quicker than anything is falling out of command. 
Yep, you know, you're right. I just saw that because as I was like, okay, those cover the hill and these guys go around. No, that's not going to work. They're going to have to all come around together. So I'm going to change my change my move. <sighs> hmm. All right. One. Do you do I couldn't find it half hexes? Do they count or not? Half hexes count as full. Yeah, play they are playable as full hexes. Man. I'm going to stick these Russians out here and they're going to be all right, whatever. So one, two, three, four, five, six, bam. So now the question is, I do have the solo assistant, everyone. Um, so I could play that, but I don't, I don't want to learn that right now. But um, so I could have the solo assistant tell me, would that M1 Abrams fire up fire on him or not? I think he'll wait to see what he can do. Uh, the question is, is there any benefit to up firing as far as direct fire? I don't believe there is. There's no dice modifiers for op fire. So there's no, no advantage to do it. Uh, and they're not going to, if they're moving all six, they're not going to be able to do any fire on the move. So it depends. Are they enhanced moving fire units? If they're enhanced moving fire units, yes, they can move their full firepower and shoot. Oh, well, let's see here. Yes, does it have can. an orange? Does it have an orange triangle on the on the unit? Uh, it has an orange triangle, but more importantly, it has an orange uh, fire uh, firepower. I think it's the orange firepower that shows says that it can do that, right? No, the enhanced the uh, da, 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 oh god, no, the orange triangle is um, reactive armor, right? Reactive, right? So it's got both. So both my armor units, both sides have both things. Well, are they T-80s? Um, T-80s, correct. Okay, yeah. Then I'm fairly certain they have enhanced move and fire. So look at your enhanced move and fire chart and see what the penalty for moving on the full firepower would be. So it is expend more than half and round down to full MPs, and they can fire. It's minus two dice, minimum one. So they have a fire dice of three, so they can fire... All right, well, maybe that M1 Abrams will fire at him, although he's just going to get peppered, but that's fine. So the M1 Abrams has got uh, 11, 4, 5. So his range is 11. He rolls four dice. Yep. Point so blank range. Five. Point blank Boy. range. Five. Well, he's at five, which is half the total range. So that is another die, right? Let's see here. Where is my... Point blank, uh, nope. Yes, point point blank fire, minus one to hit. So it's four dice sitting on fours. Yep. I roll my little 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 dice here, and I get two hits. But wait, he gets to uh, have a defense of four five. So he rolls four dice depending on a five. It's not a missile, so there's no special defense there so he wants to hit a five on at least two dice to get rid of those hits i got all the one two two three so he gets two hits so he is disrupted and reduces so now he can move away from the enemy when he is his turn again um but he cannot fire so there you go. Oh, and the M1 Abrams, unfortunately, is marked ops complete. So now it's a wide open game because I don't think anyone else can see. Who uh, might be able to see? Todd, you have got some serious buffering and pixelation going on on your end. I don't know what it may be, but your bandwidth may be getting sucked up by something because it's like at like 200, 240p right now. That's sad. That makes me sad. It does, because you can't see the map real well. I appreciate you telling me. Eh, no worries. You know, that's a bad thing. It looks great on my screen, because it's my screen. Mm, well, if you take a look at the YouTube stream, even on the YouTube stream, it's coming out horrible. Yeah, horrible. And I'm even hardwired. That's disturbing. Uh, please hold everyone while I do a little checking here. Do, 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 do. Anyway, I had to get this on the table quick because, you know, I just got it. Oh, I understand. 
<laughs> Three watching. Well, sorry for the two that are watching because I think one of those is Devin. And now one of them is me. So, like, oh, yeah, that is bad. Three watching. Mm. Well, my one son's playing. He is offline, I think. Just, please hold everyone. Just take a look at that pixelated board and enjoy. Devin will entertain you with his uh, humming. <laughs> about all the humming I know. <clears throat> Dead air. Dead air. Hmm. Well, shoot. I definitely don't want it to be a bad picture. Hmm. I wonder if I get back on and try again. A reboot. A reboot of it may work. Are, are you doing ready? this from? Are you doing this from a webcam or from your phone? Uh, Streamyard on a webcam. Huh, should be working fine then. Yeah, no, that's really strange. Um, usually when I get this way, it's very clear. All right, everybody, I'm going to... Uh, oh, man, someone else jumped on the thing, too. You can see who that is. Hey, what's going on? Hey, it's Trev Corey. How you doing, Todd? Good, Trev. Awesome. I, uh, At any cost, Met's going right now while I'm kind of watching you do this, so... Oh, awesome! Uh, and, and the funny thing is, your your screen just cleared up when he jumped on, Todd. What? Oh, yeah. Treb's, uh, Treb's great uh, Clemson power there. Try, try, <laughs> try, try minimizing us so we can get to the full screen again. All right. Of yeah, your map. All right. Okay, it's looking good now. So weird. It was his magic touch, I tell you. No, well, thanks, I Treb. Did it. Brought the good luck. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> All right, well, we have uh, Trev and Devin on here. Uh, Devin's going to be telling me everything I'm doing uh, incorrectly and uh, so say, keep your troops together there, son. Okay. Well, thanks for that, Devin. Let's give it a try. So uh, welcome, Trev, to that. Trev's playing Any Cost Mets, which I have not played, but I hear people really like that game. So, okay. So my M1 has fired, so that pretty much leaves it open for the Soviets, except for I do have a tow ATGM here. Uh, it's 13 range. That's pretty good. So let's just keep going. There'll be a, will be at least one other shot. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So when you fire stacked units, though, I think Devin, it's um, you fire a particular unit, right? Not a hex, unless it's artillery. Correct. You you fire at a particular unit, and it doesn't affect the other unit unless you get more hits than the unit you're firing at can sustain. Then those hits are automatically applied to the other unit in the hex. Okay. All right. Where is my official line of sight thing? Do, do, do. Okay. I don't have the one I want to use, so I'll use this this one here. Yeah, I got to put a diffuser on my light up here. Got this huge. Um... Oh no. Blocked by the trees. Um, got this huge, great LED light, but my plexi glares like crazy. So, all right. All right, roads. What do roads do for me here? So many great charts. Roads. Uh, Treb, Treb, did you order this? Yeah, I, I have ordered it. It hasn't come in yet. Uh, I've been kind of watching the front door, but it might be going to my mother-in-law's address because I've jumped around houses so much. Oh, yeah. But I'm looking forward to it. But I got dinner time, so I'm going to check out. Y'all have fun. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Trev. Thanks for helping me. All right. Thanks, Todd. Watch. When he leaves, it'll probably go, go all crappy. 
Well, it is starting to go pixelated again. I'm not sure. It looks like the camera is having a hard time refocusing in or something whenever your hands move over the screen. Mm. Well, let me try. Yeah, to it's, it's, it looks like it's down to about 480p right now. But uh, it looks like David from Lock and Load Publishing uh, just jumped on. Oh, hey, what's up? He's chatting. Yeah, I'll try not to. I'll try to keep my hand uh, hands hands away. Um, yeah, I have to work on it. This is really strange. That happens sometimes. Internet, good times. All right, road movement. When crossing a road exit, the cost of the train. Is there no benefit to roads? It doesn't look like it. Just yeah, you don't you don't get any benefit for. There's no half move or anything like that. It just it negates the terrain of the hex if you're moving from roadside to roadside. Mm, that's too bad because I had some. I had plans. I had big plans. So cities. It is cool that you can fire. Oh, wait, dude. I got to remember, I can fire these guys up here. I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah, it might be worth doing move and fire with those T-80s with their enhanced yep. move and right. fire. So one die. So let me go back. Sorry, everybody. I'm going back, but that's what you do. All right. So this guy's going to roll one die that moved and didn't fire. Oh, real quick, everybody. So I moved that first one. I was going to fire, but the M1 Abrams disrupted him and reduced him so he couldn't fire. So now the second T-80 that moved on top of him or with him is going to roll one die. Yep, you got point blank range with the T-80 as well. Yep, it is. He's still going to roll one die, but now he's going to hit on the three. And here it goes. And I got a one. So fantastic. So he's done. Same with this guy. He'll do the same. Hit okay, so hit him. Got a five. So now the Abrams will roll four dice, saving on fives. He's not in any terrain, though. Hold on. He's on a hill. He is higher than the unit that's shooting at him. That gives him one plus one defensive bonus. Yep, so plus one D6. So now he's rolling five dice, and he just has to roll one five. Two, six, two, two. And for fun, let's see what the second die was. One. So I only saved one, but that's all I had to save. So he's good. All good there. That guy's in a city. Well, I don't know. Can he see that guy from that city hex? Yeah, this is so different than Nations of War because uh, there's a lot of moving and shooting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven hexes. His range is 12, so it's no longer... Uh, it's no longer point blank, so he's still gonna, just going to roll one die hitting on four. Correct. And I rolled a two, so it are rolling terrible. So They're getting the bad dice rolls out of the way first. That's a good way of looking at it. That's positive. So I guess I'll put this guy in here with him, and he'll do the same. Two. So the M1 Abrams is getting just like the, the shells are whizzing by. So what does so it costs two to move in there to a city. So if I go, I could just go one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my HQ. And is there a road connecting to that uh, village X? No, I counted two. So he moved one, two, three, four, and then five, six into the city. Oh, okay. I the, the angle's a little bit wrong. I thought there was yeah, another yeah. hex in there. Okay, cool. Yep, yep. And so then their ops complete. Of course, you don't have to do all this when it's just me playing, but he can't see anybody for sure. Oh, this guy, can he? No, he couldn't. Uh, no. Okay. So I'm going to try to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bam. Okay, so now who can he see? Oh, that hill's going to be in the way. You know, if there's pre, I would imagine there is pre measuring of line of sight checks and stuff in this. Line of sight takes place when you need to check the line of sight. Mm, it's not. Okay. It's not like squad leader where you declare the fire, then check line of sight right. and could have a bad shot. This one, line of sight is when it's needed. Oh, I'm just cut off by that hill. Ooh. Oh, but that one. Oh, holy cow. 
I don't like, I have this laser that I'm using to check line of sight. I don't really like it because it's too, I can't be, I'm not still enough. Um, so I did have a shot with my ATGM, my toe into this, but I didn't take it. So I'm not going to take that one back. <clears throat> but can he see that guy? Oh yeah, he can see him. All right. So this guy is going to fire. So the TAE is going to fire on the M1 on the hill. Again, one die hitting on a four. Oh, I got a five. All right. So there's a hit. Now I get to roll five dice, and I got, well, I got my save. And now there's only two hex, two units allowed in a hex, which Correct. is cool. So the stacking's a minimum. Same, same roll here. He does, uh, he does hit. Again, another save. I think I'm rolling the same exact thing every time. One, two, two, six. All right, whatever he's saving them. And then this T80 is going to move here. Again, same one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, fantastic. So that is the Soviet turn. So let me, since I'm trying to learn the game completely. So uh, was that a formation activation or they had initiative? They had initiative. Oh, okay. See, now initiative takes place before the first turn even starts. That Correct. is a something special. So since you just completed the initiative move, start at the top of the turn order. It wasn't a formation activation. It was something before and a little bit outside the normal root flow of, of gameplay. So now you start at the exact top of the turn order chart. All right. So begin the operations phase and continue. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So um, so I got to keep those on there. So now I'm going to flip over the, I'm not going to show everybody the deck since Devin said it might be kind of blurring it out a little bit, but it's, 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 it's cleared up a lot now and we can kind of see. So yeah, yeah. You should be able to show us the card just fine. All right. So there's a formation deck. This one's very small, two American, one Russian, two in phase cards, nothing else special in it. You didn't put the battlefield events in. It's Devin. It said not to. I obey David. <laughs> um, I love playing with the battlefield events. No, I, I would do. I'll, I'll, as soon as I, that'll be my next game. I'll, you know, to restart this one and put it ba in there. baby steps, baby steps. I get yeah. it. So anyway, so here we go, everybody. It's just really nice cards. And the first card I flip over, this will tell me who's going to go. Soviets. So that's good. But now they'll be done. So then I move this card over here to the discard pile. So it tells me that my, um, well, I don't need to worry about that yet. But the information on the card tells me the unit. So if there were multiple Soviets, I would have the little, oh, yeah, you can't even see that. Oh, there we go. If the light glare. Yeah, right there. That angle's good. So the blue, if there were several, there's some with green and red and purple and whatever. I don't know the colors. Doesn't matter. But it also tells you what number that's on the, um, on the counters then this is my think of that as my morale what's it called company command rating command rating uh and then it tells me um my r radius form no yeah command command radius when at full strength command radius when it reduced he's suppressed the when the hq is suppressed so when the hq has out. been flipped yep so there we go so all right so the very first thing so i i pulled uh so it's cool. They've got a really nice chart. I'm not gonna. I won't show you here. Um, so now I refresh. I remove ops complete and out of command markers. So I'm gonna remove. Now here's an interesting thing. This M1 Abrams is still ops complete. So he won't be able to do anything this whole turn. Correct. Except Until for, his so. formation card comes up. Right. Okay. So. All right, so I refresh my command status, reassign leaders, deploy HQs, and check for command effects. So this is a cool thing that I'm learning from this one that's a little different, I think, than it used to be. To transfer the headquarters, which is just basically a counter that says headquarters, HQ, the color of the unit, and then two. The two is um, its its command value, so it can add dice and stuff and help stuff. We'll get to that later. But you used to have to move that by having the unit in the hex with it. It was, you know, whatever. Well, in, in the first edition, it was an actual unit 
um and it made it real easy to hunt it down because it was since it was an actual unit it it's a, it had to sustain with stacking limits and you could fire at it automatically and once it was destroyed it didn't come back now the command counters just represent an area of con where the command is focusing their attention on and at the beginning of every activation you can change that focus around so it's not like you're actually physically, the command team is not actually physically moving to this hex or this hex. Or that. It's just that is where the command focus is at. Right. But what's cool is, so in this phase, this is the command status. I could actually move this HQ if I wanted to. You okay. could move him to any other unit that is in command or that he can physically move to. There are going to be some very rare instances where a unit might be cut off by actually being physically surrounded. You can't move the HQ to a, to a unit like that. But as the status currently is, you're in range of, you are within movable range, quote unquote, of all units on board. So yeah, you can move it to any other unit in the formation. So I could move him to these guys that are disrupted, right? And I assume yes, I you could. But I know kind of how I want to move these. Well, he's he's going to get in the thick of. Well, I don't know. Let's do that just to do it, even though I don't think it's the best thing to do. I I honestly wouldn't because that's going to put other units of your formation out of command, and you're going to have to make command rolls for him. Oh yes, yeah. so is that is that command? That's that happens after you move the uh, the headquarters unit. So where is that actually? It's 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 a command status. It's called command status. Oh, okay, yeah. So I wouldn't do that actually because if he were closer, I could. But if I moved him here, he I would put myself out of these other guys out of command, which would be silly. Well, potentially out of command. You got to roll for it. You got to roll against their uh, command rating, but it's a six for the Soviets, and so you're looking at less than a fifty fifty chance, and then it's 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 annoying. Because that'll kill Soviet drives quicker than anything is just by units falling out of command. Okay, so I reassigned. I don't have leaders. I deployed my HQ, and now I check for command effects. Everyone's in command, so I don't have to roll for that. Uh, missile reload, which I think is pretty cool. So I got units here that have missiles, and it's that. We'll get to that. I'm pretty excited about that. It makes, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so disruption removal. Check to remove disruption markers. Well, I only have one. Uh, I know what my morale is because it's on my card. It's a six. There's no other modifiers as far as I know, right, for this. Nope, no other modifiers. It'd have a modifier if the HQ or leader was with it, but you don't. Oh, Devin, it doesn't matter. I rolled an eight. Oh, I saw that too, and I was hoping. So he'll stay disrupted. Now, I can move him. I could move him down to the headquarters. I just have to move away from units. But Correct. Oh, as, long as, you do not, as long as you do not move closer to a known enemy unit. Hmm. Interesting. All right. We'll worry, we'll worry about that in a second. Okay. Off board artillery strikes actions. All right. So now I can activate my units here. So the question is, so like Devin said, I don't want to get, you don't want to get too far away. So I don't want, I'm tempted to leave a couple guys behind to kind of shoot up some guys, but I should probably just get them moving up here. So two, three, four, so I'm going to move this guy. Oh, and there's also concealment, which these guys in the town would be concealed because they're in town and they haven't fired. Well, they're not ops complete, so yes. So it, can he fire at a... If you fire at a concealed unit, it gives them plus one uh, defensive dice bonus. Okay, and do our two... Um, well, here's a couple questions. So there is a transportation unit, M113. Do you, the units go under them when they're being transported or on top? Under them if they're being transported, on top if they are not. All right, well, let's move him. He was supposed to be not in transport, so move him on the top. Um, and so if they're not being transported right now, there's two units in that hex, so no other units can be in that hex. Can't even they, pass through. Yeah, so it's in effect at all times, is what you're saying. Yes, it is in effect at all times. And the uh, lock and load tactical is also the same way. That's pretty important to remember. It makes a difference. <laughs> um, all right, so this guy's going to go up here and go, I'm really tempted. I want to take out that M1, dude. Four, two, three, four. Mm, all right, so this guy's going to go one, two, three, four. He's moving into the woods, very close to that M1. 
Um, now here's a chance to use the eight. I'm not too worried about that guy hurting me because I can only roll one die, but I would be hitting on a three. So my ATGM is going to hold off. This T80 is going to fire one hitting on a three. Oh, no. Yeah, hitting on a three. Uh, hold on. Sorry, everyone. Devin's here to help, but I want to. I gotta also figure this stuff out on my own, so I get it. I'm so, I'm trying. I'm only stepping in when when you ask me to step in. So he hit him with a five, so that's good. Um, but now he, of course, rolls his dice. So yeah, he's gonna roll five dice, saving on fives, and he does. Of course, it's almost silly. So that's why I saved that ATGM. I wasn't too worried about it. So this guy. One, two, three. I assume tanks go in, can't go into the same hex as an enemy tank. It's an assault. Oh, but they can. So they can. Oh yes, it's part of the, assault. Is part of the movement. As long as you've got the movement to move into a space that an enemy is in, you can assault them. Ooh, I can. Hmm. Shall we assault already? What are so? Oh, the assault. He'll roll two dice at four. He'll roll two dice at four. Yep. No saves on that, right? No saves and no modifiers either way. Dang. Let's do this. Assaults is about the closest to parity that the Soviet forces are going to get unit per unit against Warsaw or against NATO units. I'm a big fan of assaulting with, with the pack units because it's the only time where you'll get really even odds. Uzi, Uzi patrols in. Yeah, all right. Of course, I would have that tow missile from the NATO unit fire the as it crosses its line of sight. That's a good point. Another thing I thought of, if I had thought about assault, I could have had both these tanks, not at the same time, but both of them could have assaulted in there because he could have both reached them. Yeah, Devin's correct there. So let's do this. Let's do a little. Uh, and so the infantry can also, without the tow, can, do, can fire at tanks, but they only have a range of one technically two um so that he can't hit him he's at three so they're gonna load up their tow atgms and they're gonna we're gonna fire those bad boys an opportunity fire so they're uh 13 range there are three away so they're going to get the they're now going to hit on threes instead of fours and they're going to roll four dice now this is different because they're firing missiles at reactive armor we'll get to that in just a minute so we're hitting on threes. I got three hits. So the Soviets are going to. So they have, they do have a very cool missile ammo. Well, that's missile ammo usage. It doesn't talk about the defensive. Something happens in reactive fire. They also have a cool chart that talks about all their special. Special defense when you have reactive armor. Where is that? Do you, do you want me to tell you? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Devin. Yeah, please it's tell a, me it, that. It, it's a minus one on their armor safe. All right. So it's a four five. So is it one uh, one on the, like, so they're rolling three dice, or it's a now a save on a six instead of a five? No, saving on a four. It's a minus one on the armor save. Oh, it's better for them. Yes, yes. yes, it's better for them. Okay, so they got three hits. They're saving on four. So I go rolling four dice. And I had two saves. So they take one hit. So they are disrupted. So it worked. Always want better results than that. But it's disrupted. Now they can't assault. And those guys are now ops complete. And now you have to roll for missile ammo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's the fun part. All right, so they have a candy dandy chart here. And it is an infantry SW support weapon ATGM. Um, okay, all the for all the first reloads are just a straight up command roll. The reloads is where you have to worry about what type of unit it is and if it fails or succeeds, it's reload. Okay. So do I have to roll here? Or I just put it on there because I have to. Check nope, nope. You 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 roll against your command rating, and if you succeed, then they still have ammo. If you fail, you put a reload ammo or reload missile marker on it. I don't, I don't know what my command. Is. 
<laughs> it, it's it's whatever the command for the formation is. And for NATO, it's a seven. There are very few units that are an eight and or five. Ninety percent. Okay, so he failed his command rating. So you need to find one of the blue missile reload markers. Oh, does he have to roll higher than his command rating or lower? Oh yeah, lower. I'm sorry. Yeah, you rolled lower. Yeah, you <laughs> you made it. You're fine. No. Yes. Cool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Derp. Awesome. Had you failed your command rating, then you would have to find one of the blue missile reloads. Yeah. Then when you reload, then you'd have to look at that chart to see what happens. Sometimes some weapons, if you fail that first reload, you're completely out of ammo. Other weapon systems, you're at low ammo and have one shot left. It all depends on what type of unit it is. And that's what that chart you were looking at uh, goes into. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. So he's within five. So if you move here, he will be fine. So that guy can move here. So I'm just looking at my disrupted unit, how I want to move him later. All right, so let's see. These guys go one, two, three, four, five, six. Watch where your units are for your command circle. Got it. And one, two, three, four, five. I hate not using everyone's all their movement points. It drives me crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I could move there and do some firing for both those units. Okay. Oh, oh, actually. Hold on. So these guys are up on a hill now. The M1 Abrams on a hill. There's a tree line in between them, but they're above the tree line. So they could hit that M1 Abram. Yep. Hills are at flat ground is level zero or level one, however you want to look at it. Trees are level one or two, and hills are one step above that. So, <clears throat> Well, they moved all their movement points, so they're going to be, they move more than half, so they're going to fire one die, hitting on a, th on a three, though, because they are at exactly half range. He hit. Let me roll my four die. This is, like, ridiculous here. Maybe they saved. But you never know, right? Like that one will sneak through. So that was the first guy that moved in there. I need to do this in proper order, everybody. Sorry. And then he missed. Okay. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that guy will move up here. Now he could fire down at these guys in here. Maybe I should do that. So I'm talking about the, I would fire at the infantry unit because the transportation unit can't do jack. But here would be a little different. My firing at soft targets is six, three, five, one, two, three, four. So he's not going to get that advantage. So I can only fire one dice sitting on a five. So let's do that. I got a six. Now, if those infantry were in the open, they'd get no saves. Mm, incorrect. Infantry always get a save at a five or a six. What? That's bull crap. I know. All right. So they get one save naturally because it's a soft. On he said on a five or six. Devin said. But the town's going to help him out, and the town helps him out a lot. The town, I believe, is 3D6. Nope. 2D6. Nope. What? City. 1D6. Oh, infantry in town. Yeah, I think it's different for infantry in town. Yep. <laughs> Troops, 2D6. So now I go from rolling one dice, saving on a five or six to three, and I save my one hit. So, okay. Fine. Whatever. All right, so the same thing. That guy's going to do the same thing. Uh, same thing. Fire. Let's got. We got. We got to get that ATGM done. I missed. Okay. Yeah, I got to get really up close and personal here, don't I? I didn't want to waste my time going on. So this headquarters unit is going to move up here. Um. The headquarters has to move with the unit. So he's moving with that T-80 unit. He'll fire. I really want to hit that M1 Abrams. That's the only one he can see. So he's going to fire four, five. He's going to fire the one dice. So the other three again. Nope, he's sorry. backed with the headquarters. He gets two additional dice. Oh, yeah, baby. That, there's one hit. Um, he's, so he hit two hits. All right, two hits. But they still get to roll five dice. Saving on five. Remember, he's not uphill this time, so he doesn't get the uphill defensive dice. 
correct. All right, well, there we go. So he saved one, but didn't save one, so he's disrupted now. I, uh, I probably messed up setting up the Americans the way I did, but we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, all right, so he's ops complete. So this guy can move one, two, three. All right, so this guy can move in with this. Can he move in with it? Yes, he can. So this guy, disrupted guy, is able to move in with the headquarters. And that's it for the Russians. Everyone's moved. All right, so I look at my little chart here. That's the formation impulse steps. Took my actions. Da, 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 da. Available unit or stack actions. Oh, I didn't even look at that. Oh, I just told you. Okay. All right, so now proceed to the marker removal phase. Nope, I don't know. I don't do that yet. Otherwise, return to the operations phase, phase one or above, to draw the next card. All right, everybody, I'm going to draw the next card. It is Charlie. So, Americans get to go. All right. Yeah, this game can go pretty fast once you know all the stuff. That's for sure. Remove ops complete and out of command markers. So finally, I get to take this ops complete off the American, and I get to take it off the M1. Now I can move my, oh, so I've got a, a, a command value of seven, a range of five and four, so five. Oh, let me ask a question, Devin. Yes? Is this headquarters for the Russians? What's this about? I can I move him to this ready to deploy box? That happens either if at the beginning of the game. Technically, at the beginning of the game, you don't have to have the headquarters on the board. Normally, what most people do is they will set, take the headquarters, put it in the ready to deploy box, kind of like support weapons. Support weapons don't have to be placed at the beginning of the game. You just stick them up in the ready to deploy box, which means you can deploy them as needed. Support weapons whenever you want them. Headquarters whenever the, the headquarters phase goes around. So... If a headquarters is suppressed in a round, it goes into the suppressed phase, and then at the beginning of the formation, it or at the end of the turn, it moves up to the ready to deploy. It's just a holding box for units that don't have to be deployed yet. Hmm. All right, so here was the mistake I made. Well, let me see, where, where are we on the step here? I gotta do things in order. So I refreshed, I removed my out of complete and the out of command markers. Now, well, I, it's not it's not a mistake. So I can redeploy headquarters. So I put my, my Americans over here. I put my Jeep toe way over here. Six, seven, eight, nine. He's nine hexes away from my HQ. <laughs> so, I mean, right. it, it kind of doesn't matter at this point because there's no one around. But you got now. We, now I know what the Soviets do. I'm going to want to move those guys around. But the cool thing is, I can redeploy this headquarters. So I can move. You can. Around. And move him onto this M1 Abrams here, and he's now within radius of everybody. Correct. So I knew, hey, Devin, I knew what I was doing. I knew what you knew what you were doing. That's why I didn't say anything. I knew you saw that and were going to, to, to take care of it. Yeah, thank you. All right, so now, all right, so that's, uh, so I redeployed my headquarters because I'm uh, just such a smart guy. And after I do this, I'm going to see if there's any other chats. It looks like we've got some uh, comments here, so just a minute. Um, and out of command, reassign leaders. Now I check for command effects. Well, now oh, I actually, I don't know if the M1 is going to be in command range. What's the radius on your headquarters? Yeah, he's at seven. Shoot. He has to be with the unit, though, doesn't he? The headquarters? Yes. Hmm. So what can an out of command person do? Nothing? Uh, if you go to check. The only thing an out of command unit can do is op fire. You know, that might be okay this turn. But he's disrupted. No, I mean for the Jeep. I'm saying oh, for might, the Jeep, yeah. I might want to move my guy back here. Well, there's a, there's, a, there's a chance that he won't fail his command check, though. You got to remember, if a unit's out of command, it, you got to roll to check to see if it actually is out of command. Well, that's what we're going to do. All right, so where are you keeping the headquarters unit? I'm going to keep them with the where I Okay, so yeah, now you roll the command test. For any I units that are out of range, roll an eleven. That's a, that's a failed. He's out of command. 
Sorry, Jeep Toe. So now I get to punch an out of command mark. Correct. And I don't even have to round it, round the corners, because it already is. Nope. Right, so I think that's the only uh, command status. All right, so I'm going to now, just for a second here, look at what the comments were here. Uzi Patrol. I haven't had Uzi yet, but on my channel in a while. Uh, lock and load. Good to see you. Uh, hello. Hey, hey, Uzi Patrol. Jump them. Yeah, I did that. Lock and load. Can't wait for Christmas part two. Uh, when to get World of War. Yeah, I bet you are exhausted, David. First of all, David's been, David responded to me today about something. My, uh, I just chatted with him. Well, Devin knows we just chatted online, but um, I had a live chat on uh, Dan's channel. Uh, my boxes came torn, actually, my two main boxes. And um, I sent a support ticket in, and so they're going to they're gonna take care of that. So that's cool. And Keith just joined us as well. Oh, Keith Tracton? Yep. Hey, what's up, Keith? Thank you. Uh, this is awesome. Nice viewing crowd here, a little Sunday late afternoon. I Instead of watching football, you know, this is what I'd rather be doing. So, okay. All right, so what we have is we have an out-of-command Jeep tow and missile reload. I don't have to do that. Disruption removal. So now I've got my M1 over here who's disrupted. So now I need to roll for seven or under. No bonuses. I, mean, I guess I could have put the headquarters on. Oh, I rolled Ooh. a 10. Rolled Ouch. a 10. Woo! Exciting. That's not good. So I will probably want to move him back. All right. Doesn't matter. I'm not there yet. Uh, Off-road artillery strikes. Actions. Action. Okay. So now I want to take some actions here. So the Americans get to go a second time here, possibly, if I don't get ops complete cards pulled out. So I really want to, I think I'm ready to move my infantry under this improved position marker. But I think I'll wait till my second card comes up, hoping it does. So I put the improved position in this lower town hex, thinking I would defend and then move into it. And then leave that transportation unit there, unless that's a dumb idea, I don't know. So I'm just, I'm just, as I give my strategy, I'm listening for Devin to chuckle. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to fire my infantry uh, ATG on this guy here. He's already disrupted. Or do I just fire at the guy that's not disrupted? Hmm. I think, uh, well, and then remember the Soviets are six or less. So it's not, it's not a given by any stretch. So I think I will fire at the guy in the woods. But that's going to affect me a little bit. So I'm going to fire my missile. It's four dice on fours. However, I'm definitely half range, less than half. So now it's going to be four dice sitting on threes. So let's do that first. Holy cow. Three sixes and a five. We'll take that. So that's three, uh, four hits. Now his defense is... Four dice at five. However, it's reactive armor. Four dice at uh, four dice at four, and he's in woods though, so that helps him. He gains another d6. Gains another two d6. And why is that? Let me look at my. Gains thing. one d6 for being in the woods, blocking fire, and gains another d6 for ATGM firing into blocking terrain. Ooh, where's that? It's, it's uh, 10 point, where is it? It's an oft overlooked one, 10.6.12. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to minimize my rule lookups, everybody watching, but I do want to see that because this is pretty important. So say that again, Devin. 10.6.12. Page 61. Yep, got it. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I think I saw someone uh, make a comment on that on one of the things. Yeah, we're, uh, we're debating that right now. <laughs> so, But rules as written, we'll plus one for the blocking, cool. plus one for the ATGM firing into a blocking terrain. 
so it's let's make sure I'm getting this right. So it's it's six dice on five. A minus one for the uh, reactive. So six dice on fours. Correct. You don't fire at T-80s in woods or, or buildings with missiles. <laughs> oh my gosh. Four, five, six, six. Saved all four. That's not even rolling all the dice. Ah, sigh. I guess not. Roll for missile am for ammo. Won't do that again. Eleven. Blue marker. Blue marker. Hmm, not a good turn for this guy. Oh, I don't think this matters here, but the headquarters is a has a two on there. Does that help? Headqu with he the headquarters would give a two additional attack dice for the for the uh, firing unit. So go ahead. Yeah, I would go ahead and roll the two extra dice to see if you get more hits. There's one more hit. The Soviets had two more dice to save. Correct. And I got it. So. Okay. Wow. Five hits and five saves. What was that? Reducing it down to four, man. Okay. All right. Well, wah, wah. All right. So now what else do I want to do? Do I want to move my M1 back or not? I might as well. I don't know what difference it makes. Well, you don't have to worry about any op fire. All the uh, pack units are ops complete, so you can basically move away freely at will. Yep. But do I move far away so they can't? Do they do they get any advantage if I close if I assault a disrupted unit? If a disrupting unit gets assaults, it hits on sixes instead of its normal uh, assault in the factor. So for the M1, it's two dice at four. If it's disrupted, it'll get two dice at six for close Ooh, assault. Boy. Yeah, I don't want him to do that. So definitely... yeah, no, you don't want him to do that. <laughs> I think he'll. But remember, you still do have one activation. That could potentially come up, so. Yeah. I think I'll just move them back a couple. Yeah, he, the, the Soviets aren't going to go, well, they could, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll just move back a couple. So he did that. All right, so this, now I know where the Soviets are going. I need these other guys to get moving here. So I can definitely bring this M1 Abram over here to, oh, I can move him into the city here. Need cost moving downhill. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, six. But they're gonna rush over this way. They're not going to, they have to stay in command. So one, two, three, four, five, six, spook. I assume do tanks get advantage of improved positions or is that just troops? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Don't okay. forget the uh, M1 has uh, enhanced moving fire as well. Yep. Cool. Thank you. So let's do that. Let's fire. I'm not, well, I should, oh, now this firing into the guy in the woods isn't as bad because it's just nope. the shells. Um, Uh, yeah, let's try to do that since he's my closest guy. So, all right, so he's he's eleven four five, so his range is three, so he's definitely gonna get that. <clears throat> so now he's sitting on he's sitting on fours, but he did move, so there's gonna be a little bit of a penalty here. Oh, and Keith is saying that armor does benefit from uh, improved positions. Does yes. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, Keith. Well, it's only minus one fire. So he's going to roll three dice, hitting on four. Yeah, the NATO uh, enhanced uh, move is much better than packed enhanced move. I rolled one hit. So I'm going to roll four di five dice, saving on five. And I got it. But now he's in an improved position in a city. So, uh, but they only get two dice extra max. And so this nine oh one ITV. So he's a soft. He saved, he's going to roll one dice and save on a six. So I don't want him to get. He's going to get knocked out quick. I think. <laughs> so I probably want to move him back and away to maybe protect the back hill here over here. So one, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Get them up on the hill. Oops, complete. You're starting to pixelate out again, so try pulling your arm back and see if it's actually the camera for some yeah, trying, reason. Yeah, trying to focus. Yeah, that may be. Well, they, is the audio okay? They can, it'll be like a oh, the audio is fine. Your, your audio is coming through just clean as clean as can be. You know, everyone, close your eyes. It's a radio play. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's everything. The the Americans have done everything they can do. So now it's um, let's see. Da -da -da. Looks like Nerdy Dude One Eight Six has joined as well. Fantastic. All right, so there's nothing for me to do here except for um, pull a new card. So okay, new card. Ah, Americans. Okay. All right, so ops complete. Go ahead, let me I just want to do everything over. Sorry, everybody. Um, yeah, nerdy dude was saying, I thought the pixeling was my signal. Nope, it's it's from Todd's end of things. Sorry, so. everybody. So the ops complete come off everybody, so that's cool for Americans. So the Soviets are not getting... Oh, the Soviets did get their card. So. The out of command comes off as well. Oh. Yep, remove all ops complete and out of command markers. That's cool, okay. And I think that yeah. Okay, so that's cool. So now, uh, command status, reassign leaders, deploy HQs. So now I could move him here, and everyone would be in command. Yeah, now it's cleared back up again. So it must be when your arm is moving in, it's throwing the signal off for some reason. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so I, I moved my HQ back to here, so now everyone's in command. Okay. Okay, and roll for missile reload status. Here we go. Yep. Want my little charty poo? All right, so it's just uh, rolling on my command value seven. Yep. Move my dice tray over. All right. Um, all right, seven. Seven, baby. Or it's a two. So seven. We got it. So he's reloaded. Check your chart just to make sure it is. So that's cool. So now let's. That's. Uh, but anyway, that's a cool thing. Uh, people who don't know the game, they could be out of. The, they could be. Let's see. So if I'd failed, uh, where is it? Which one? That's infantry. So if missile reload attempt fails, leave the missile reloading marker on the unit. Oh, so they just can't fire. But it's a support weapon. Is support weapon and infantry the same chart, the same line? Mm hmm. Yeah, support oh, okay. weapon. Okay. I just couldn't remember if infantry, uh, there were inherent infantries that had. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. If you take a look at if it had been something like the, uh, the tow vehicle, the ITV. Yeah, so the tow vehicle is a little different. It's a green non transport. Place a missile ammo low marker on the unit. Yep. So missile low means it can only shoot one more time, and then it's completely out of ammo. What's interesting about this chart? It doesn't really. I'll have to look at it closer. Oh, no, yeah. It, do, it doesn't really tell me that that would happen, but we don't have to worry about that right now. So. Well, yeah, that, that it says it, the the definition of missile low is in the rule book. Okay, I'll look. I'll check that out because yeah, it does seem where there's no consequence to that. Okay. <laughs> So what am I doing here? So I'm now I'm checking for disruption. Come on, seven or less, boys. Easy. Imagine you're playing ASL. Go. Seven. Woo. As Keith was saying, it's an infantry support weapon, so they have a truckload of reloads. <laughs> oh, I got you. Cool. Uh, okay, so now the Americans. Um, I'm ready to do my actions. So I'm not now, gonna now we're going to start seeing pack units die, I have a feeling. Yeah, don't fire into the woods with the missile. Fire the missile into the one that's already disrupted. <laughs> now it's uh, four dice hitting on threes. Is he stacked with the HQ? Oh, no, you moved the HQ back. Yep. Yes, I did, unfortunately. So three hits. Um, his save. Now I got to... 
four at five, but it's uh, against that ammo, so he gets a D6 for that, or is it four and four? Four at four. It's minus one. Reactive is minus one at the save. Three sa three hits, three saves. Woo! Woo! Even on, I don't. Man. Yeah, what's, what's up with that? Dude. Yeah. Keith's going, I sense the Soviet right flank is going to collapse under the weight of fire. So do I, unless Todd keeps rolling what he's been rolling, then... All right, so this guy, this is a, now a line of sight question. He's on a hill. He His line of sight goes over another hill hex, and then this guy is here. So I don't think he can see him. Nope, the second hill will be blocking. Is there a blind hex and then they can see or no? Um, there are blind hex rules, but for the life of me, I can't remember them. Right, I'm pulling out my... They have great line of sight visual aids here, everybody. Um, I mean, incredible. They're very good. Now, see, I have read the blind hex and line of sight from Hill's rules probably a couple dozen times. However, I still get them confused with ATS and ASL line of sight rules. So I have a very hard time keeping them all straight and together. Yeah, but so it's blocked. Okay. Well, there you go then. We'll go with that. So then I guess this, like, so these M1 Abrams could move. I know this is going to be a tighter one. I think they won't move this time. He's going to fire on this guy in the woods. So he's going to roll four dice. Hitting on fives, but he's half range, so hitting on fours. So four dice on fours. Come on, but Come on, buddy. Three dice, three hits. We've seen this before. They're in woods. They're going to roll five dice, saving on fives. And that's a lot of saves, man. Cock die. Uh, Two saves so far, and roll one more. Save. Three hits, three saves. I thought, uh, hmm, okay. It's, uh, the right flank is not falling. <laughs> yeah, both of those stacks should have should have should have dissolved if normal people were rolling. But no, Todd's not a normal person. He has to roll five hits and five say I don't ever want to play you. Just that's that's just. Let's, I, I, let's, I'll just say that now. Your dice rolling is too good for me. <laughs> you have dice there, Devin? You can roll from somebody. All right. So. Oh, actually, when we play, it's with Vassal. So I can I can, I can can live with the Vassal dice rolls. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because that screws both people over. <laughs> Same thing. Four and four. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Three hits. Five, Three six, hits. Six, one. Wow. Three more hits. Let's try it again. Come on. Come on. All right, so far two saves. We get to more roll one more die. Is he going to save that third one? Is he finally going to get disrupted? I missed my box. He's finally disrupted. Gee, man. It's insane. Uh, so what about this ITV? Can you see anybody? Oh, I can move my Jeep, too. Maybe I'll do that. Let's do that. So he, he has a movement of six. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Uzi's patrol, Uzi patrol is going low. Does Vassal roll the same number twice in a row? Yeah, it's Vassal dice roller. So, yeah. Looks like Gun Barrel has also joined us. What? Gun Barrel. He's my nemesis. <laughs> And uh, nerdy dude, nerdy dude, so much for my suggestion that you two play each other over the internet. Oh, Todd and I are going to be playing when Vassal goes live. I can, I can almost guarantee it. Oh yeah, I got a game. I got to have to play a game against uh, Devin. I won against Kev. Uh, I have to play. There's a lo I got like a local guy here who's getting. He's a miniature player primarily, but he's getting all all the shebang, like the map and everything. So we're gonna. Well, well, like 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 you were saying in your unboxing, this uses a lot of miniatures mechanics. Yep. So, so I think it's not I'm, very hard for, you know, like a Flames of War player to step right into this. So I'm moving my ITV. I was going to move it so we could hit somebody. But I think I'm just going to move him back here on the point of this hill. So now everyone's in command range. So he's off to complete. Okay. So that's that. Everyone's done. So now 
pull the, I, let's say, I don't think there's anything else I do here. I pull the next card, end operations, end operations. So that means that's the end of the turn. So now I go to my handy dandy chart. That would go way faster if I weren't narrating it and everything and learning it, everyone. You can see just how fast, I mean, it, it could go. Um, all right, so now we're no cards are on the formation deck. Proceed to the marker removal phase. Remove ops complete and out of command markers. So let's go through and remove all the little cute little red X's. Devin, I appreciate you coming on and uh, helping me out with this. Oh, I, well, I, it better for me to do it now than try to try to get you up to speed when you and I are playing. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is kind of self-serving in in my own right too. So I, the more that I can help you understand the rules, the smoother and faster our games are going to go. Exactly. All right. So all right, I need to remember that guy's disrupted. A lot of disrupt. We got three disrupted uh, Russian units. Okay. So Brian Gash is is asking y'all strongly prefer this system to the MBT mechanics. I do. Yes. Um, but I haven't played the new MBT. I've just played the, the old MBT system. However, I, it, it, this is platoon, whereas MBT is individual vehicle. So you have to worry about armor penetration and hit location and, you know, all that. So this plays smoother and quicker. Uh, but I think MBT is a more realistic because you do have the individual hit locations and armor penetration values and all that good stuff. So, but that's, that, that's just me. I, I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. So I have not played MBT. I have played Panzer, which I, you know, consider them similar. Um, I, I would say I'm not a real uh, cold work on hot guy. So I think I'm good at this level of play. This is like the perfect level. Keith and the team added a nice level of detail that didn't exist before. So it's going to require me to learn. To read, do a little bit more reading, kind of like that book I had on my unboxing, so I can just learn a little bit more about it. But I don't really want to get into it to that depth that MBT is. But so MBT is like a squad leader, and this is like Panzer leader. If you want to yeah, it. yeah, exactly. And Uzi Patrol is asking: Are platoon-based games simpler than individual vehicles? Yes, the the good platoon games will always be simpler than the good squad level because at the squad level you do kind of have to worry about hit location are you hitting the track are you hitting the front glacius plate are you know are you hitting the side of the turret and then you have armor penetration versus armor values and it's just a bunch of extra steps this is just platoons it's it's simple dice rolls it's it's you have a platoons combined firepower versus a complete platoons combined defense MBT stands for Main Battle Tank Nerdy Dude. It's a game that originally was done by Avalon Hill back in the late 80s, and GMT has recently redone it. Yeah, it's done really, really well. I mean, it's very cool, and if you're into that kind of detail. But I do like platoon level, so I also have the new revamped Panzer Blitz because it's it's a, it's a nice scale of that because you have line of sight, and you have some of that. It's just it's a lot easier. It, and you can get bigger battles. In that. And this system's even easier than Panzer, the new Panzer Blitz even. So, okay. And uh, so I, and honestly, I, for my World War II, sorry, is David still on? Lock and look. Um, I, you know, right now, Panzer Blitz is my platoon level World War II game. And and this will be my platoon level Cold War gun. Huh? This will probably be my only, well, I do have, I probably will get Heroes Against the Motherland at some point, but. Or no, I'm sorry, Heroes Against the Rising Star. That's that's Cold War Gone Hot in their tactical level. So if you guys watching that you're kind of learning about this, they do have a Cold War Gone Hot platoon, or I'm sorry, squad level game like ASL or something that is called Heroes Against the... Heroes Rising, Against the Red Star. Red Star. And it's squads and tanks. But it's way easier than ASL. I mean, it's much simpler than that. But... It's pretty cool though, because you get all the same weapon types. You get missiles and Heinz and you know A10s coming in, and it's it plays very differently than the World War II version. It's pretty cool. Okay, Brian. Brian is asking. He or he said he's been holding off on lock and load tactical. Least he goes nuts and sink, or lock and load. Least he goes and sink. Uh, lots of cash into a new system, but I'm tempted. Th try out the starter kits. Go to the lock and load publishing website. They've got starter kits for uh, lock and load tactical. They've got starter kits for World of War '85. Download the download the starter kits. Take a look at the rules. Rules are available online for free, um, and 
watch videos and and make your informed decision that way. Uh, that's one of the things I think Lock and Load Publishing has done wonderfully is that for their series games, they do provide free starter kits because it is an investment to jump in. And, you know, you're not going to jump in unless you know you like the system. And they're providing a way for you to find out if you like the system. So that would be my recommendation. Yeah. So what do the starter kits cost? 15 to 20 bucks or something? Oh geez, oh I'm not even, I, 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 you know, part of me wants to say nine ninety nine, but I can't remember what the price point on them is. It's no, it's no more than nineteen ninety nine, and the starter kits can be downloaded for free from the website. You'll have to do the print and play option where you mount the counters and all that yourself, or you can order the starter kit for like you know, no more than nineteen ninety nine. I know that. Um. Yeah, the yeah, so it's all available free, print and play. I mean, uh, and if you wanted, you could the the starter kit. I think is on Vassal too. Yes, there is a starter kit with one scenario oh. for World of War on Vassal. So even it's Vassal is a little bit of a curve, but it's so it's literally all free. You don't even have to print. Just, well, yeah, you don't even have to print. You can download the rules, read them on your computer, go on little Vassal and play it for free. It's and it's Vietnam and um, World War Two. So, okay. So I uh, roll for, I, I've uh, cleared all the out markers. I flipped my first card, it's Russian. So the Russians are gonna go first this turn. And I rolled to undo the disruption. So I rolled like an 11. I rolled a seven, but they're unfortunately their morale level uh, command rating is six. So they're still disrupted. And now we got this guy that's disrupted underneath the headquarters who I purposely placed under the headquarters. So is he going to roll two more dice then? No, he gets a additional plus two. All right. So, so now he can, okay. So plus two or minus two, I suppose, right? Depends on how you look. It's either plus two to yeah. the command radian or minus two from the dice roll. It's well, two better for him. Yeah. Well, it's good because I rolled an eight. And that's what you needed. So he made it. So he's a reduced, but at least he's not disrupted anymore. So that they saved a unit. So I'm thinking I probably, although, gosh, man. Hmm. Okay. So now the Russians need to go. So the question is, do I want to move these Russians away from that flank? Or are they good kind of, they're probably good occupying the Americans' attention. So this guy could go one, two, three. Looks like Viper Dave just hopped on. He's saying, hey, all. And Keith is saying he has to sign off for a few and thanking you for the gameplay. Hey, thanks a lot, Keith. Appreciate you coming on. Appreciate everybody who's watching. It's like you've got a pretty good crowd on here. So, again, I guess everybody, so you know, this is World at War, 85. Brand new game that just um, has been redone from an old thing. Doesn't matter that, but it's new. Just came out of Kickstarter. Um, you can buy all the games now at Lock and Load Publishing. I bought the game, so this is all, it's not a commercial. It's, it's all my, I bought everything. Um, and just got to be a Kickstarter, and I'm playing for Scenario 1. Uh, Devin um, is just helping me out. Uh, he just jumped on and gave me laughing at my tactics and just helping make sure I got the rules down. So, <laughs> so was, Dude, you and I have played. You know what my tactics are like. You have beat me more times than I have beaten you when we have played. So how can I laugh at your tactics? Hmm. You know, <laughs> Uh, yeah, let, let's not discuss that right now. Okay, <laughs> so the M1 Abrams, uh, you know, the M1 Abrams is not going to fire on this guy. I'm going to hold off on that. This this Russian that went around this hill, he's still on the hill. The Russian is going to fire on him. He has to. It's going to be a pretty tough shot because he's moved. Um, he moved. Let me think here. So I moved. What if I went one, two, three? One, two, three. I had to move four, so I, I'm still going to have to take two dice off my roll. So I'm rolling one die. Let's just do this first. One dice uh, on a, hitting on a four. I'll tell you right now, the shot's going to be pointless. But I should... Oh, wait a minute. He's well, in a, wait, the, the, M1, the M1's in improved positions. And he's concealed, too. He is concealed right now, so that'll... But the the since you're only firing one dice with the enhanced move and fire... The uh, that hit, even if you get it, is automatically going to be negated by the improved positions. Oh, yeah. So, well, how about this headquarters in this ITV center over here on this other hilltop? You can fire at him. Is he in woods? Nope. Well, then he's out in the open and probably will be a dead, dead, dead ITV. Well, actually, no, with the enhanced move and fire, he might be able to disrupt him. So, I might want to do this then. If I'm going to do that, I might want to only move. 
You'd have to move less than half. It still works. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're on hills. Those hills would be flat terrain. So it's a it's an even shot straight across there. All right, let's do that. So he's going to fire one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's firing over half. So right now it's 12, 3, 4. He moves, so it's going to be pack minus one. So it's, I'm rolling two dice, hitting on fours. Yep. Four and a six. Wow, dude, your dice are just freaking smoking. So, and then the ITV has a save of six. So he's rolling one die at six. Is there any... Okay. He's not concealed. He's not in uh, defensive terrain. No, it's it's one dice so at six. He's going to be at a minimum disrupted. Roll to one. He is disrupted and reduced. But Devin, what is this here? We have a headquarters here. You have a headquarters in a unit that took a loss. You're going to have to make a roll for that to see what happens to the headquarters. Yikes. Well... So, so I'm not looking for that thing, keeping everyone in suspense. What is that? <laughs> if uh, if a unit, if a headquarters is with a unit that is takes a step loss, you roll a d6. I think it's on a straight up six. And then if it's in a unit that has been destroyed, then it's a four, five, or six. Let me check that. I that is one thing I do get a little bit confused on because because yep. again I get it confused with the old rule set. So here's a cool thing, everybody. They have every die roll in the series. It's one, eight and a half by 11, two shot, two shited sheet of paper. Oh boy. Two sided paper. Let me just go down here and see HQ leader reduced WIA. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've got it right here. 10.7.2. Uh, if any unit oh. stacked with the HQ or leader is reduced, roll one D six for each HQ and leader in the hex. If one unit stacked with an HQ or, elim or leader is eliminated instead, yada, yada, yada roll and add two to the dice roll. Okay, so on a one, two, or three, no effect. Four, five, or six, the headquarters is reduced. Uh, let me ask you a question real quick, though, before we do that. Did that, yes. two, that. did that command bonus help in his save? No. Okay. All right, so he's unaffected. I rolled a two, so he's good. Okay, so he's not. But had he been reduced, that would they would have been flipped over, and that would have reduced his command rate, his command raid radius. Wow. Okay, so we're good. Whew. Yep, you're good. So oh, yeah, yeah. any time a unit that is stacked with a headquarters or a leader takes a step loss. On a one, two, three, it's fine. On a four, five, six, it's reduced. If a unit is eliminated, you add two to that dice roll. So basically, one, the the headquarters would be fine. Two through six, it'd be reduced. All right, this TA is going to do the same thing. He's going to move up here, and he's going to fire on that guy. Let's do that. That was fun. But now he's only going to fire one die on him because then he moved three. Is he at half range? No. Oh, okay. But I rolled a six. So he's hit. So he's hit. And roll one die. I did not roll. I rolled a two. He is destroyed. So now. Oh, hold on. Keith is saying add in the bonus. Um, we might have gotten it. Oh, for the. Uh... For the hill. You've got the charts. I'd have to run over and grab my charts. Make sure uh, Hill it doesn't add a defensive bonus. Even though, even if I'm on a Hill too. Yeah, hey, anyway, let's let's check that just to make sure. Looks like only downhill. I'm on a Hill. Maybe Keith maybe doesn't know that. So it looks like the chart's saying he wouldn't get that. Oh, can. He's not concealed. Are you saying Hill does add in a uh, defensive bonus? What? All right. Well, the chart says, I hate to argue with Keith. <laughs> it says. Oh, he, yeah. Keith, Keith just picked up that you're on a Hill as well. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, cool. 
All right. Well, I just rolled that die. I rolled on a six. I rolled a two for save. So he did not save. The ITV is dead. Right. Now I re-roll that uh, leader reduce, but I have to add two to the roll. Correct. Ooh, seven. So that means the headquarters is reduced. <laughs> Chat lag. <laughs> okay. The Americans have a casualty on this fancy mouse pad chart I have. Okay. Oh, here it is. Yeah. If all units stacked with the headquarters leader eliminated, the headquarters automatically reduced, if not already, and moved into the suppressed holding box. So you're going to have to move that headquarters into the suppressed holding box on the card. Correct. Is he reduced in that box? Yes, he is. Okay. Oof. All right, Amy's. Uh, Amy's just had a major blow. All right, so in this case, um, I'm also just move these guys. I might as well just haul booty. And I'm going to step away real quick, so I'll be right back. Although I'm going to haul booty, but now the Americans get to fire like crazy. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh baby. All right, one, two, four, five. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. So I'm trying to think here, trying to decide how I want to do this. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. This reduced unit is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Hmm. So this is a question when you play solo, everybody, that like would the Americans fire on this guy? Because he's, I mean, he could fire on him, but he's not going to, like we already know, he's in an improved position. Oh, does improved position help with assault? I mean, does it matter? If, can I assault in a city? Oh, boy, I got all kinds of questions. So, and concealment does what? So, everybody, I've lost my help. Where's my helper? All right, so let's look at uh, direct fire. Uh, all right, so what am I looking at here? I'm looking for concealment. All righty, I'm back. So... So what I'm looking up now, Devin, is just you said I'm trying to just find out where what concealment does. Plus one, one defensive one. dice. Oh, that's not bad. So concealment is a plus one, but he's a soft vehicle in a town. That's going to be another D6. So it's going to be two D6. Saving on a six, no, nope, saving on a five, six. Oh, if I'm firing at a soft vehicle with the T80, am I using my soft target or am I using my AP on them? Armor piercing, hmm. Hey, Devin. Yes? Firing a T-80 at a Jeep tow, is that considered what I'm using my AP or my HE? Well, is it a soft target? Yes. Well, then you probably... Well, I think with soft targets, and Keith can correct me if I'm wrong, I think you can use AP or HE at soft targets. Because they have light armor targets. Or at vehicle targets, I think. That's light armor. That's light armor. I'm using my handy-dandy cards here. Ooh. Soft target. I gotta think there's some sort of a benefit to using HE on them. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna worry about him right now. 
So I moved this T80 here. He's my reduced one. You one, two, three, four, five. I could move down here right next to him. <laughs> Brian just mentioned he pulled the trigger on starter kit for $22, including shipping. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> All right. Hey, we sold a game. Yay. I'm sure I'm going to get my commission check. All right. Um, how about assaulting into a in city with improved positions? Uh, the improved position uh, helps defense in an assault. So it will get one free, uh, oh. it will negate one hit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can you, can you close? So, okay. All right. Hold on. So this guy's going to move in here. He's, I guess basically, okay. I go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's going to move down off the hill. So here's my question. This is a problem when you're playing solo, Devin. It's like, would you, you know, did this M1 fire, Abram fire on him or he wait for these full units? I'll just ask you, what would you do? Well, first off, you've got that tow, the uh, tow Jeep back there. Good point. All right, I'll fire it. Thank you. So, okay, so he's going to fire the tow jeep. It's four dice. Is it half range? Yes, it is. So he's hitting four dice on three. Uh-oh, dice are going cold. One, one, two, and a three. So one hit. So reactive armor, four dice on four. Correct. Because he's in the open. Yep. Woo! Hot dice are back. Six, six, Jeez, six. Jeez, man. I mean, it was one hit. That's usually pretty, usually going to save that. And he's off complete. Well, is he done moving? Uh, yeah, he was out. Of oh, one, okay. Two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Can't move there. That, the stacking limits at all times is very interesting. Yeah, it. Uh, it I have. I have blocked myself off many a time trying to get over a bridge because I left two units stacked in the hex right before the bridge. Right, this this guy's gonna go. He's gonna move here. One, two, three, four, five. It's down there. You're going to fire at this tow ATG. So, oh, oh, he could fire at that Abrams over there. Let's do that. So he's going to fire that Abrams over there. He's going to fire three dice. Nope, he's going to fire one dice. Hitting on a four. Uh, hitting on a three. And I rolled a one. Yeah, I think these guys are going to be screwed, but we'll try it. Oh, I could roll into that hex. Yeah, and there's no way they're going to make it in there. I'm really wanting to do assault, but I think that's pretty dumb. <laughs> I mean, the, the Americans haven't fired yet. So if I go into assault, they're just going to get blasted. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Well, you know what, Devin? How many, how, many, how many units left do you have that haven't moved? Three. Okay. Well, I could move, I could move my disrupteds away. Yeah, but, I'm not counting those. I'm I'm looking at how to how to soak up the op fire to try to get some units into close assault. Yeah. Well, I have three units that can fire on them, and I have three units. So. Well, it also depends on how you can approach it, because the M1 that's furthest away is he on a hill? I can't tell. He's on a hill. Oh, he is on a hill. Okay. So he could. All right, so I noticed you can move units as stacks. As a stacks, yeah. But you still would fire op fire on one unit. You op fire on one tar on a single unit, yes. But it may be a way to be able to deliver a package to get someone into the assault. Moving as a stack. Yep. Well, so that's what I was thinking. I was going to move these guys one, two, three, four, and then into the Abrams in the improved position. But, man. But who knows? Maybe they, everyone will miss them, you know? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Oh, let's try it. Let's let's just do it. Come on. That's what we're learning here. So moving to the woods, one, two, clear three. I would op fire at that position. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. The M1 Abram will fire on him. So I'm gonna roll four dice, hitting on fours. Hitting the shooting at the top of 80. Three, one, two, three. No hits. <laughs> no hits. Um, so the ATGM is also going to fire. Mm, he can't. He can only fire once per hex. You've, oh, so that's a saving as a moving as a stack then. Uh huh. All right. Well, fine then. Fine. So he'll move down here. The stack will. Now the ATGM can fire. Um, it'll cross one blocking hex side. It it blocks if it's two hex side blocking. You need two two blocking hex sides to block the line of sight. So he can fire. And he'll fire the top one. So again, four dice. Hitting. Now make sure he doesn't have a minimum range. It's a, if it's a tow unit, I don't think toes have a minimum range. It does does it have a black triangle on the unit? Okay, so it's fine. Two hits. It's a missile. He's rolling four dice, saving on fours. It's just two hits, Devin. It's just two. The way you've been rolling. He saved them both. Oh, so that's fascinating. You're saying one op fire per hex moved. So that M1 cannot fire at the other T80. Well, the problem is now he is moving into the assault. You can op fire at the moment the assault is declared. The unit oh. that is being assaulted can op fire at the moment the assault is declared. So the M1 will be able to get its op fire. However, he's only, unless you roll really, really good on the attack and he rolls really, really bad on the defense, one of those is still going to slide through. Okay. So, and do you claim that claim that assault at the beginning of the move or like right mm, now? Well, in lock and load tactical, it's required that you do that beforehand. World at War isn't, it doesn't say you have to. And in a friendly game like you and I, I wouldn't care when you declared the assault or when you declared the enhanced move and fire or any type of move and fire. Um, but if you want assault at this point, if you didn't declare the assault at the beginning, it's no problem. In lock and load tactical, it would be an issue. We have to declare it in lock and load if we're going to do an assault, if we're going to do low crawl, whatever we're going to do at the start. World of War, we don't have to. Well, then I'm going to assault in that hex. So the M1 Abrams now will roll four dice hitting on fours. Three hits. Fours on fives. Oh, man, I almost did it. <laughs> uh, well, he took two hits. So one of them disrupts and reduces. Correct, but the other one gets into the assault. Just wax. All right, so everybody, assaults for both guns are, are both units are two dice at fours, hitting on fours. But the M1 is an improved position. So, Devin, you said what happens there then? Well, go ahead and roll the dice, and I'll tell you. All right, brush and roll first. Four and a six. Okay, roll the American. Two and a two. Oh, no. All right, so the U.S. did not get any hits. The Soviet player got two hits. However, the T-80 is an improved position, so that automatically negates one of those hits. So just take the dice away like it didn't even happen. So now you're left with the NATO player getting zero hits, the PAC player getting one hit. Right off the bat, the T-80 is disrupted because it took one hit. Oh, it didn't now, take hit. Hold, hold on. The American... Or, yeah, yeah, no, the T-80 inflicted a hit. Sorry, yeah. So the, the M1 is disrupted because the T-80 inflicted one hit. Yeah. The, T, the, the T-80 got one hit. The U.S. player got zero hits. The U.S. player is pushed out of the hex. Any direction? Any direction. I think it has to be away from, uh, uh, it can't move, it can't retreat to a hex that's closer to an enemy unit. Okay, got it. Now, 
the NATO, it's the Warsaw Pact player won the assault, or basically he got more hits than the NATO player. Had the NATO player gotten more hits than, or, okay, let's restart that. Mouth <laughs> work. The attacker needs to get more hits than the defender to push the defender out. If the attacker gets less than or equal to the number of hits that the defender get, the attacker is repulsed and pushed back into the hex he came from. In this case, the defender took more hits, they're pushed out. Now, a little follow-up rule that a lot of, not a lot of people catch. A motorized unit, a vehicle unit that just won an assault can move an additional hex as long as that hex is not into another assault. Mm. However, you're sitting in a village with improved positions. I don't think you're going to want to give up that position. No. He moved into an objective hex, though. However, the whole city has to be taken, so I'm not going to flip that yet. Okay, that's awesome. That for the Americans. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to move my headquarters. This feels wrong, but I'm going to move him one, two, three, four, five. He's moving in with the guy that just took the city hex. Yep, that's what I would. And don't feel bad about moving your headquarters up there. Remember, at the beginning of your next formation phase, you can move the headquarters wherever you want. The thing is, he's going to do here. Hold on. I'm going to mute here. Well, no, I'm not going to mute. They left. Okay. Um, but that unit that just moved in there, he can fire on this infantry soft unit next to him. Enhanced move and fire. So he's going to roll one dice. So let's just roll and see what we get. And we'll worry about all the things. Roll a six. So it's one hit against the soft unit. However, which one were you firing at? The infantry, right? The infantry in the city. <clears throat> So, city, 2d6. Are you performing? Yeah. They save on five and sixes, so they saved it. All right. All right, what a turn for the Russians. Woo. Okay, so let's see what time it is. Okay, it's almost 6.30. I probably should go see what, what's going on with dinner. So, everybody, that's turn two for the Russians. There, there are four, five, four cards left, two in DOPS and two American cards. For the Soviets, they would love to see the American cards not get to happen this turn, and they could get the next turn started. Um, anyway, I think that's good. That's a, that's a long video. What are we going to go in here? Other comments on here? Uh, HE for soft targets. Okay. Pull the trigger. Okay. Devin talked about all those. AP versus vehicle is permitted. Jeep is a soft target, but still a vehicle, so either HE. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'll probably come down here after dinner and kind of finish the game probably offline so I can kind of crank through it quicker. Maybe I'll do a video about the, a re recap of it. Devin, thanks a lot, man. Oh, hey, you're welcome. Gosh. Hey, Trev, thanks for coming on and clearing up the screen. <laughs> um, thanks, uh, Brian, for buying one of the starter kits. Uh, Lock and Load thanks you for that. Keith, thanks for designing a cool game. Uh, bye for Dave. Thanks for joining us. Brian Uzi, thanks for joining us. Nerdy Dude 186, thanks for joining us. Uh, GD uh, Gun Barrel, thanks a lot, man. It is insane. Keith, who else? I miss, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Nerdy Dude, Keith, 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 Uzi, Koozie, 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 uh, Koozie, not Koozie. StreamYard, thanks for uh, hosting the software. David from Lock and Load was on earlier. David from Lock and Loaders on here. Thank you, David. Thanks for creating a thanks for taking over the company and creating some cool stuff. We appreciate it. It's fun. Um, so thanks a lot again, everybody, for joining. That was awesome. Good live stream. Thanks, Devin, for all your help. And, you are welcome. Uh, sometime. Oh, yeah. What is the we should have asked um, what is the timeline you've heard for Vassal? No you clue. Know? Okay. <laughs> so, it's 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 being worked on. Uh hopefully soon yeah that's cool um yeah cool and then uh, then when that happens everybody which who knows when that'll be you will see Devin and i play some games and it'll be a little easier to see stuff and we'll just share our computer screens we've done that before with other games so all right 
Devin, thanks a lot. Have a good uh, rest of your Sunday, and uh, yep. I'm sure I'll talk to you again sometime soon. Thanks all, okay. and uh, have a great uh, Martin Luther King Day, everybody. Talk to you later. See ya.